post the slide. Both, both. I'm doing both of them. Both of them. I went on Elon yesterday and I, I couldn't figure it out. So I had to go back again. So, so pardon me. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for your understanding. I have to call Mr. Silly and he'll have to walk me through because I was looking for where to upload, where to upload, and I couldn't. I just couldn't figure it out because I'm not accustomed to this platform. I'm only accustomed to the Canvas platform. And, and I used Blackboard before, but I have a little challenge. So I, I beg your indulgence. But I will be posting both the slides, Crystal, as well as the PowerPoints, right? So you'll get both. But that doesn't mean that you don't read your chapter, you know, at least go through chapter and pick up the fine points and so on, because I wouldn't be able to go through those in the lecture. Okay. Understood? All right, sir. Thanks. Okay, great. All right, so let me pop my PowerPoint, let me share, and let me get this lecture started. Okay. Somebody could raise your hand, you can do what you need to do to, to um, share screen. Excuse for the book that we're using. Yeah. On course outline, by chance. Yes. If you scroll on the course outline, you'll see the name of the text. And um, we have a link to the, somebody will put it in the chat for you. We have a link to the text already. Right. I want to go on that link, a Google link. I think it's a Google Doc link or something. And you'll be able to get the, get the information concerning the class, get the, the text. Thanks. One question, so um, yes. I missed the last class, Christina here. Mm -hmm. um, did, we, did you record last class because I missed I recorded the session? First, I recorded the first half of the class. Okay, so, and you put that up on um, Elon when- No, I yeah, I will, yes, I'll pull it up. Uh, by next okay. class, it'll be up. I'll speak to Mr. Silly, and he'll walk okay, me then. through the uploading, right? Thank you. As I said, thanks for your patience. Okay, so am I sharing my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what you're seeing on the screen? Chapter three. Right, okay, great. So we're looking at social, moral, and emotional, where did you want? And emotional development. <laughs> social, moral, and emotional development in um, across the, the spectrum from early childhood, primary, and a bit of adolescence, okay? Um, in terms of organizing questions, the questions that we want to look at, what are the different views of social, emotional, and moral development? And what are the stages that children um, pass through in terms of social, emotional development? What are some of the theories that, are, that look at these different factors? And how do the knowledge of social, moral, and development would help us as intentional um, um, teachers or persons who are striving to become intentional teachers? All right, so you know, the social development has to deal with what? What does social development ha have to deal with? So the way a child interacts with others. Right, yes, very good, Cece. How do children interact with others? And what does um, emotional development deal with? Somebody else? Their feelings. Do Just feelings alone? The way a child reacts to different situations. Right, the way a child or individuals act to different situations and circumstances, and um, as well as how they manage their emotions. You know, when children are very, very young, it's very difficult for them to manage, manage their emotions. So that's why they have temper tantrums and they, you know, they, they, they can get carried away easily. But as they get older and they enter into different, um, different social situations and circumstances, they are taught and they learn by observing others and by being um, encouraged or reprimanded. They learn how to manage their emotions. And what about moral development? What does that have to deal with? The way a child is brought up, I guess. Yes, it impacts, yes. The way you're brought up impacts your moral development, but what does moral development really deal with? What they think is right or wrong. Right, what, what children think to be right or wrong. And um, 
and how they respond to the requirements of right and wrong. You know, um, so that's the, the moral development would be the why we make the choices that we make. Why do we stay in line if we see a police officer or take a chance and drive on the, on the, on the high, on the, um, the shoulder of the road if there is no officer present? If you are very hungry and you're passing by somebody's yard and you see um, like a bottle, of, uh, uh, a box of juice resting at the yard, like they were taking out, you're real, real twisty. And like they were taking out groceries and they forget a box of juice somewhere, right? And it's just accessible, like they rested down near the car or something like that. Is it okay because you're extremely twisty to just go and take the juice and drink it? No, sir. No, no, sir. But you're twisty. So it doesn't matter. Wrong is wrong. Wrong is wrong. Okay. What about if you suppose you um you have a close family member, a husband, a wife, a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, um contracts COVID and they're near death and they found a cure for COVID and the the the, the cost in the drugstore is $500 and you have, you only have is 450. All you have is 400, you can't get the other 100 and the person is close to dying. Is it okay if you get a chance to steal the, the, um, the drug and, and, and leave the $400, the 450 behind? Is it okay to steal it and go with it for the $50 difference or the $100 difference? If you don't do that, they will die. It will yeah. still be wrong. But given these circumstances, mm -hmm. is it, I it's think okay. it's a situation. I in wouldn't say it's okay, but in that <laughs> situation, you we would take it. You would take it, all right. Take them like a hundred dollars for somebody's life. So yeah. I, so I it's think okay. it I think it would be a moral dilemma. Yes, it is a moral dilemma. So and but wrong is wrong. Wrong is wrong. They should never wrong take is it. wrong. There is no right about that. You can go and borrow the money from somebody. No, you can't get it you borrow. You have to see. No, you, you don't. Can't get it borrow. No, you have no time well, to get borrow. That's the only yeah. two options, yeah. Well, I, you, 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 I believe you can speak to the people and you let speak to them and they say no. They say no. Your, they say, yes or no? They say they, they said you spoke to them and they say they pay the money for the drug and that's the price and they can't drop the price. If you don't want it, leave it. Have other people come and buy it. So I'll take it on credit too. No, they ain't giving no credit. <laughs> and you have nobody to borrow it from. Well, no, you would no. have to leave it because at the and end let, of the day, you're tarnishing your character. Rest if you steal, so you, you, you have your, to leave your family your, member. So you let your child die? You would have Say to leave it. Before, eh? I you said, would have to leave brother, it. Sister. Either or. If so your child survived, you still wouldn't be able to see about the child because they were jail. Yeah? $400? Yes, you're still jail for long. You will spend about a month in jail. Oh, God. <laughs> There's so no right way about this. To you, have to leave it. you have There's to no leave it. You have to leave it. Let the child die. You have to leave it. That's why I've taken it. You're no, taking it. you would. <laughs> yeah, I've taken it. That, well, that's just saying about the type of morals if you, you take have. it that All you right. have and how you grow. Why you letting your child you have to leave. You will you, have but to you leave. It's a hard then? choice, but you will have to leave. A child you all, all you can do now is pray and hope for the best. If what you leave your, it, God might God might make sure the men die. And what about the what about if it's your husband? He go have to die. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't have no husband, so that's why that comes. <laughs> No, so, so suppose I don't know how to it. Yeah, but suppose I have, I have, I have a child, and the child still well, dies. Well, so I have a child and the child it and get arrested and the person still dies. So and so the I, person I still die. Well, exactly. Well, we'll see. All right, all right. Okay. This will be another ending conversation. You have to leave it. All right, okay. That is why it is called a moral dilemma. And that's what Kohlberg used. And we'll come to Kohlberg's levels of our moral development just now. And you see where your, where your decisions will fall into one of those levels. But there are people who make choices regardless of... Um, so when, when Rosa Parks sat on the bus and she didn't move, when Martin Luther and they fought, when Gandhi and they fought for um, freedom and they went against 
what was the, the, the norms of the society. That was not right or wrong. Was that right or was it wrong? But don't answer that question. We'll come back to that. All right, so let's get into, um, we're looking at the, the moral development, um, some views of personal and the moral development. Okay. Yeah. Right, so as children improve in their cognitive skills, and we spoke about cognitive development last week, they are also developing self-concepts and ways of interacting with others and the attitude to the world. So it's important to understand personal and moral development. And if you would like to motivate them and understand their behavior and to teach them how to interact and how to work well with others at various ages. Now, one of the first um, individuals that we want to look at, right, one of the first individuals that we want to look at would be Eric Erickson. And he, he's a theorist, um, psychoanalyst that looked at psychosocial stages of development. And he said that each stage, people have a crisis to go through, something that they're facing, that they have to deal with, okay? And in terms of his first stage, those of you who would have done introduction to psychology, you may have come across that, or psychology of human development. If you did that course, you may have come across Erickson's eight stages of psychosocial development. And the first stage from birth to 18 months, he says, is the child is going through a stage of developing trust or have a, a sense of mistrust in the world. So if they are fed with, properly and on time and they're well taken care of, they, their meals are provided or they are breastfed, they are changed when they're wet and so on. They develop a sense of trust in the world. They develop a sense of confidence in the world. However, if the children, when it's time, they leave them crying for long hours, they're wet, they're unchanged, they get being fed now and then spasmodically, they're hungry and so on they don't feel that the world is a safe place. If they are treated poorly, if they are abused in any form, they develop a sense of mistrust. So that is Erickson's first stage. Then he looks at the second stage as autonomy versus shame and doubt. Autonomy, when children want to develop a sense of autonomy from around two years to three years, and you, you find that they, they're walking now, they're beginning to chat, build chatterboxes and so on, and they begin to move around and explore the environment. And if parents have a child-friendly environment and if parents facilitate this exploration and this curiosity, then develop a sense of autonomy. Whereas if they are shut down, don't do this, don't interfere with that, sit down here, be quiet, et cetera, and they don't get that opportunity to explore, they develop a sense of doubt. If every time they attempt something, they are, they are, they, those attempts are not facilitated. Then in terms of stage three, initiative versus guilt, this is when they reach the, prime, the, um, the early childhood level. And during the early childhood level, you have a development and maturation of motor skills, gross and fine motor skills and language skills and so on. And again, the further exploration of their social and physical environments. And, and in these circumstances, children develop further sense of initiative where they can try new things, where they can explore these environments or again, if they are not facilitated, a sense of guilt. Then the next stage, the fourth stage is what is Erickson calls industry versus inferiority. This is the stage of primary school children from six to 12, where they want to develop a sense of competence. Can I do this? And this is the sense of industry. Would I be able to read, write, and do arithmetic? So those are the three R's. And of course, the fourth R being respect as well. And so that is why children, during the primary school years, they're always competing with each other. They always compare in their work with each other. They always want to do it like Miss or like Sue because they want, to, to, they want that validation that they are developing a sense of industry or they can do things rather than a sense of inferiority that they are not able to accomplish much. The fourth stage, the adolescence. Where, and um, the fifth stage rather is adolescence where you either develop a sense of identity or identity confusion where individuals are asking the question, who am I? What is my identity? Who, who am I becoming as my own person? And that is what the big um, challenge that teenagers face during these years of adolescence, ident 
developing their own personal identity that would be different from your parents. Of course, they, they gravitate more towards their peers during this period of time. Then you have stage, stage um, six, in intimacy versus isolation. There's the young adult stage and where they're going through developing a sense of their career and looking for someone to love and to be loved. After that stage, you move on to the middle age, middle adulthood, generativity versus self-absorption, where they're looking to pass on their skills and talents and goals to the next generation. And the final stage, integrity versus despair, when they're looking back on life, in like the late 60s when they retired and so forth into the grandparents or great grandparent phase and they're looking back on life and to, to determine whether they have accomplished much in life or whether they have not accomplished much. So it's integrity versus despair. So those basically are Eric Erickson's eight stages of psychosocial development. Why is it called psychosocial development? It is called psychosocial development because He's suggesting that the mind develops and the, 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 the social um, component of the self develops through social interactions. So all these different factors have to deal with how they interact with other individuals in, in their environment, their um, significant others in their environment. Okay. So let's move on to Piaget. So Piaget also had a perspective on moral development. And he looks at moral development developing through moral reasoning. So just as the cognitive structures in the brain changes, as Piaget, remember last week we spoke about Piaget's four stages, sensory motor, um, pre-operational, concrete operational, and for formal operational stages, Piaget looks at the individual moral development as going alongside in a very predictable manner alongside their cognitive development as well. So the cognitive ability will determine how students, how children would be able to reason in different social situations that they would find themselves in. All right, so you, you have some criticisms as far as um, the Erickson theory is concerned. Not all people experience Erickson crises at the same degree at the same time. Um, there may be some differences in age ranges. And of course, they emphasize the role of the environment, but in, but in causing the crisis and determining how well they will be, res will, will be resolved. Um, critics also say that it does not explain how and why people progress and it's difficult to confirm through research, all right? So some of these theories by Erickson, as well as um, Freud, were developed by their own personal research with some Erickson used a lot of his children, et cetera, et cetera. So they have some little question marks. However, we do see the theories playing out uh, on a wide scale across different cultures as well. Okay, what are some views of moral development? We have the views of society. And if you look at the picture here, society basically tells us what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. However, children would see the world very different to the way adults view the world because children operate in terms of their moral development on a different dimension. Um, what do you see in the picture here that depicts the, the choices in terms of moral development? So the angel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what kind of angel do you see? The, the one from heaven. You only see anyone from heaven? Is only one angel that have any picture? So, well, well there's, yes, there's only one angel in the picture, and there's the devil. Oh, the angel and the devil, right. Well, the devil is an angel too, you know. So it's a good angel fallen. and a fallen, right? Yes. <laughs> a good angel and a bad angel, right? And many times when we are faced with a moral choice, it is depicted in that way, that one is saying, yes, do it. The other is saying, no, don't do it. And this is, this is the, um, the dilemma sometimes that we face. So you're walking down the road and somebody, you know, you're, you're really, so in that same situation where 
you need the $100. So you walk out of the drugstore and you're really depressed and you're down and so forth. And somebody walk in front of you and they pull out, their, they pull out a wad of money. They have like about, they, they pull out like about $600, $100 bills and one fly out. You walk in behind them, they don't know it fly out of the pack of the, the whole water they pull out. And one out of the 100, out of the 600, 100 out of this file. What do you do? Do you take it and say, well, thank God, he sent the 100 for me? Or do you call them and say, excuse, excuse? Well, I'll try in class. Yeah, she stepped out. Yeah, Somebody's mic is on. I doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Can I answer? Yes, yes, Stacy, go ahead. Right. So I have had an experience before in the past where I was traveling in a car and uh -huh. somebody came uh -huh. out of the car before me and the wallet dropped. Right. So the guy was going to cross the road and I called him back and I was like, excuse me, drop your wallet. And I right. gave it to him. And the driver of the car turned and say, um, if you didn't want it, you could have leave it and let somebody else. That <laughs> driver's terrible. But you didn't need you didn't need any money at the time. So even though I needed money at the time, I would not do that because right. I know that is wrong. And I believe somehow from small growing up, this is just something that has stuck with me. Mm -hmm. me if you take something that doesn't belong to you, you just lose more than that. You lose so more than that. that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Anybody else? Well, we're not talking about that situation. We're talking about the person pulled out a whole water, hundred dollars, like about 600, hundred dollars. And just one little 100 just fly out. And you need, that's the 100 that you need to make up to buy the, the drug to save your child life. So I would give it to them because they could need the same 100 dollars just like me. Okay, Jordan, so you give it to anybody else? Nobody go take it? Yes. So being honest, I'm going to take it and see it as I sign. <laughs> as I sign. <laughs> I don't be honest in that situation. I you say that's a sign like, from God. God yeah, that's that a sign. Yeah. All right. All right. All that's, right. That's a sign. Sorry, that's we just say it, but. Okay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Everybody entitled to their own view, their own opinion. So this is, and so many times in life, we might say we'll do something in a certain situation. And when sometimes when the situation comes up, we do the opposite. Sometimes we think we'll do the wrong thing and we do the right thing. Sometimes we think we do the right thing and we do the wrong thing because as human beings born in sin and shaping iniquity, we have challenges with our morality. And that is why we need God in our lives to always help us to do the right thing or to guide us in the right way. All right? So you have to be guided by God. It's better. To me, the better thing to do is to take it up and give the person back and say, you know, you draw this money and I was tempted to take it because I'm in this situation where X, Y, Z and I really, really need a hundred. Is it possible that you could spear this hundred or make a donation to a charitable cause? What about that approach? So most times people like that, when you give them back the money, sometimes mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't care. They would be, and sometimes even though you would think that you did the right thing by giving it back to them, some of them don't even take the time to say thank you. Thanks. Right. Okay. But you can still try, right? Doesn't hurt to try to do the right thing. Okay, great. All right. Let's, so let's continue. Okay. Right. So Piaget's theory of cognitive development includes the theory of moral reasoning. All right. We spoke about that already. Let's move on. Right, so in terms of Kohlberg, now Kohlberg looks at moral development through three levels, and he's the one who came up with the whole notion of the moral dilemma, and it is called Kim's dilemma, where it was it's basically the same thing I communicated. He needed a drug for his wife, and the pharmacist was selling the drug very expensive. And the guy asked, and he asked the question, should the guy who needs his drug to save his wife's life, should he go and break into the pharmacy overnight and get a drug to save his wife's life? And if he did, whether it would be right or whether it would be wrong. So those are the three different levels. The pre-conventional level, the pre-conventional level of moral development according or moral reasoning according to Kohlberg is before the individual gets into what society expects, the expectations of society. The conventional level 
would be what are the conventions of society? What does society expect from him or from her, from an individual? And the post-conventional level is the highest level of moral reasoning where people will go beyond what society expect and stand up for, expects and stand up for a cause or even make sacrifices beyond um, what is expected. And here you have this, um, this sort of a step ladder and uh, these blocks and the first level. So the level one is the pre-conventional individuals younger than six. And the first two steps would be, so they obey rules to avoid punishment. They're doing the right thing because they don't want to get licks. Step two, naive hedonism. They conform to get rewards and to have favors returned. So you might hear children in school saying, um, give me one of your biscuits now because you know, when I had mine, I share with you. Or they're looking forward to get the reward because they did right or they did, the, they, they did what misexpected or what's so expected. So those are the pre-conventional. From 7 to 11 is where they look at good boy, good girl morality. They conform to what is um, approved or they stay away from what is disliked by others because they want to be seen as a good boy, as a good girl. And some people are still like that. They, have, they hold people's opinion of themselves very, very highly. So they wouldn't take any chances um, if, they, if they're faced with a moral dilemma. Let me give you an example. Um, a couple of times I was driving to the campus and uh, and class, classes not normally start like about nine o'clock and like 8.30, I'm heading to the campus or after eight, I head into the campus and uh, I see students on the way. I'm alone in my car and I stop for, for a student, a female student. A couple of times I stop for a female student to give her a drop. Whether a student, but I know or I don't know them, but I teach them, I don't, I just stop to give them a ride as a lecturer. And I noticed that the students, would, they would never come in the front seat and sit down. Why? So because that's that kind of inappropriate, it got to raise eyebrows. So people just talk. I am so sorry, but that's life. People would say stuff. What, do, what will they say? They're concerned about what society would say about them. What was society say about them? So that both of you not at a student <laughs> lecturer <laughs> relationship <laughs> they going a little bit further. <laughs> because it's because it's a non front seat of a car. So people just talk, you know, people will always find a way to make a situation bad. Right, right, right. So to avoid that, you go to the back seat. So nobody will say. She gets a drop, she pretending she's not with the lecturer. That's why she said on the back. So they're saying that's an all. Yeah, so <laughs> I find them taking a risk just getting into that car. Yeah, that's a risk. What, I just say only that because I just think it as that is not your vehicle. Yeah. Put yourself in the back seat. But I just say I don't I am not a chauffeur, so don't sit on the back seat. Like if I give you, you know. I give any yes, other drop. Sir. Those are the only I think it's the same thing. I so, find uh, I don't uh, like that either. But I'm just I'm just saying that to show how people would make decisions because they don't want to be perceived as a bad girl or a bad boy. Right? Um, and the step four, again, conventional conforms to, to avoid censure by authority. So some people only do the right thing because they don't want to get punished. So the level of morality that they're at is between seven and 11 years old. The third level, the post-conventional level is where they go beyond what society expects. So they conform to maintain communities, emphasis is on individual rights. Is it right? So the, the anti-vax movement is one that emphasizes individual rights. Yes, the society is facing a pandemic, but what about my individual rights? They say, my body, my choice. I should be able to choose what I put in my body. No, nobody should be able to dictate that. So who is more important? Is the individual more important or the society more important? That is what the, the person's face and they make choices based on that. And the highest level of moral reasoning 
is where individuals subscribe to principles of conscience. They would follow their conscience rather than follow their um, their principle, their the what society expects. They would follow what is right for their conscience. There's a story in the Bible when Mary Magdalene broke a bottle of perfume on Christ's head and um, and wipe his and pour it all over him and wipe his feet with her tears, wash his feet with her tears and dry them, dry his feet with his with her hair. Now they were at a little, they were at a lime at a, a Pharisee's house. So how did how do you think people what what do you think was the nature of the people perceived to be the nature of the relationship between Mary Magdalene and Jesus? So knowing her background, they thought that something was happening there because even to now you just hear people saying that Jesus and Mary, they had a child together. <laughs> they had a child. Where did the child disappear? Where the child went? I don't know, but that is what was said. All right, okay. So you see how people, people impose their own moral standards 